If you were a parent that says, yes, you can have everything you want, what would your child be like? A brat. But if you were a parent that says, no, you can't have anything, then you would, that would be terrible. <laughs> so the same thing with God. God has a right side and a left side. He has law and commands and truth. And on the other side, he has blessings. So when you've eaten all your food, you can have your ice cream. That's how it works. And you don't get your ice cream until you eat all your food. So that's why he says the right hand. The one who walks. Now, walking in the Bible, there are a lot of type and shadows. The Bible is a spiritual um, book because it talks about Abraham and how he had to tread. God told him to tread, and everywhere you tread, I will give you that, that area, that land. What was he doing? He was giving him evangelistic authority. So, <clears throat> any place in the Bible where it talks about walking is talking about evangelistic authority. So he walks among the seven golden lampstands. Now the lampstand is a menorah. A menorah is seven uh, candlesticks, seven complete. And the candlesticks have what? Fire. So that's a sign of judgment. That's a sign of light. That's a sign of brightness, judgment. It exposes things in the dark. So what's he saying here? He's inspecting with his judgment eyes to see if we're moving in the seven spirits. Because that's the whole thing that God wants. He wants us to move in the seven spirits. And you could see this in Revelation 5, 6 through 7. It says, A lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth to judge. How does he do that? Through us. Psalm 82 says, you are judges. How long will you judge unrighteously? But the sad thing has been that we won't let him judge us, so we can't be judges until we let him judge us. And we're clean. You cannot see your neighbor's speck if you've got a plank that's in your eye. So, six, notice this uh, verse six, because the Bible always coincides with the numbers too. But six is the number of weak, fragile man. I've taught you that man works six days. This is your six days work. Truth, law, judgment, death. When you've worked those six days, when you've done everything he's taught you to do, then he resurrects you, and that's the seventh day power, and you move in that power. Why do you think Jesus did most of his miracles on the Sabbath? To irritate the religious leaders? Yes. But <laughs> mostly because he was showing that in that seventh day power, man can move that way too. Which one? Guys, I'm I, off the cuff here. The six, oh, six days is truth, law, judgment, and death. That's your six days work. And then you die. And then you're resurrected. Now that doesn't mean physically. I mean, it, it can. But Jesus was tempted in the wilderness first for 40 days. And he overcame the devil. And this is the same thing we've got to do. We're going to do it spiritually first. And then we may, I may be called to give my life. And to tell you the truth, I don't really care. Because I'm already dead. But he ain't going to take me before my father tells me it's time. So, six is the number of weak, fragile man. Because man works six days and rests on the seventh. That's a spiritual principle. Seven means complete. So we cannot be completed until we have all seven spirits. That's why all the sevens are in Revelation. Okay? Anybody got any questions about this? Okay. Move on. He goes on in verse 2. He says, I know your deeds. Now look what this says. I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance. But yet grace, blessings, and prosperity message says we don't have to do nothing. Hmm. I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance. And that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles. And they are not. And you found them to be false. Now, how do they know that they're apostles? Because it takes one to know one. They're apostles. 
They have their apostolic foundation. They can see when somebody's lying to them because they have God's wisdom for righteous judgment. They don't have a Canaanite spirit that says, oh no, you can't judge me. Judge not lest you be judged. But yet, if you look in the Greek, that word judge says krima, and that word is su. So in our English language, it's been made out to say judge, but that's not the same word as sue. If you sue, you're going to be sued. That's what that says. But we are called to judge. We are called to judge. And this shows you another reason. This just shows you another example that proves that. See, they're judging these people that are evil men, and they put them to the test because they're calling themselves apostles. And see, the church today is calling themselves apostles and they're sleeping with other women. Or, even better, they're calling themselves apostles and they're letting their children do whatever they want to do. And they're not putting their children up against God and saying, judge those children. <laughs> I'm not going to stand in the way. You judge them. You make them just like me. <laughs> So they found that they're not. So is he, is he putting them down for judging them? No, he's commending them. Do we see that? Do we see that he is commending them for judging them for calling themselves apostles and they can see you're not an apostle because you haven't been judged. Hmm. They have a zeal for righteousness. I'm going to tell you, when you've got that apostolic foundation and somebody misquotes the word, ooh, my favorite one, Somebody says, well, the Lord will not put on more than you can handle. Hmm. My Bible doesn't say that. My Bible says the Lord will not put on more temptation than you can handle. I hate when they misquote my father's word. Because it, it's a doctrine of demons that they teach. The Lord will put on more than you can handle if you think you can handle it. He'll make you bow your knee. He said, let me know when you're done. Because then I'll help you. When you're ready to be weak, vulnerable man, then let me know. Okay? But until then, you can just carry the whole load. You know, let me know. But he will not put on more temptation than you can handle because he knows what will break you. He knows what will send you away from him. He always provides a way of escape, that verse goes on to say. There's always a way of escape. You have just got to open your eyes and close your soul to take that way. Anyway, he says, I mean, I'm sorry, I want to I elaborate on that a little bit more too. <clears throat> I have a zeal for righteousness and purity, and that's why I judge. When I walk around and I see people that have $1,400 shoes and they know nothing about God, I judge them. Not to hurt them but so that they'll move that stuff out of the way so that they can see my father. Because apparently they're putting their identity in their stuff. And when that fades away, what are they going to have? Do I know? I don't even know this person. I just knew of this person that they had $1,400 pair of shoes, just one pair that they paid that for. So that woman does not know my father. To put that kind of money because that could feed a lot of people and you have to live vulnerable. Now, do I have a problem with having that, you know, once the whole world is restored? Of course not. But right now, that money would be used more wisely to bring more people in the kingdom. That's what, my only thing. So I have this zeal for righteousness and God is commending them for that. And, and verse 3 says, and you have patience. And have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. So we got endurance, patience, toil, man six days. I looked up the word patience and that word is hypomene. And it means someone who is able to abide under heavy weight for a long period of time. That's what patience means. Mark has broken his legs. He had an accident where, where he's in the hospital and he has two broken legs. And God's going to teach him how to study the word because he can't move his little busy feet anymore, can he, Mark? Micah. <laughs> he, can't, he, he's a, he loves to go do things, but now he's going to have to sit. And, and I want him to study the word because it's a perfect opportunity for him to study the word. 
He's coming under this, he's in this situation because God wanted him to be in this situation so that God can forge his spirit in him if he cooperates. Because I see him a pastor. I see him a powerful pastor. And if he goes on that journey with God, that's what he's going to be. So you have to have patience. You have to have the ability to un be under that heavy weight because I'm telling you, if you haven't been trained in that heavy weight, there's no way you're taking that strong man off the mountain. That dude can put some pressure on you. Evil, evil strong man can put pressure on you. He could send all kinds of demons, all kinds of conflicts, and you keep coming up that mountain, he's like, well, I'm going to throw this at you. What about this? What about that? What about this? And the thing that's awesome that I love about God is none of that stuff is in me when I'm ready to go. So, yeah, I'm having conflicts everywhere I go that are all out here, but none of that's in me. So all I got to do is just release my peace over all those conflicts and keep coming up the mountain and saying, yeah, what do you think about that? That's my father. I'm not scared of battles. I'm not scared of conflicts. I've learned how to equalize the pressure. I've learned that he can only do so much to me because my father is the one who's in charge of that. I've learned that I'm the clay and he's the potter. And so I look and see whose foot's on that wheel. Now that pot don't feel too good because it's going up and down and up and down and the foot's on there. And then it gets thrown in the fire to bring out those beautiful colors. Man, that's, that's painful. But once in a while, once in a while, the potter will find some clay that's pretty endurable. I mean, it, it's, it can stand some fire more than most clays can. And he'll turn up that heat and he'll make it so beautiful. And the thing is, he doesn't put that piece of pottery out there with all the common pieces. When you go into the potters, you say, I want something special. He's got something in the back room. And that's what I want to be. I want to have yatir. I want to have something that makes me stand out above the rest. Not because I'm prideful, but because I want to do what my father says I can do. I don't want to just do it man's ways. I want to accomplish the goals that he said that I can accomplish on this earth. I want to lay my life down so that I can bring more people to him. I want that. So I pay the price of patience. I've learned patience. When you're able to bear suffering and death for the sake of others, you're going through the spirit of judgment. You're going through Ephesus. You're going to go through burdens and pressures and attacks. In 2 Corinthians 4, 10 through 11, it says, and you can make this personal, I always carry about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in my body. See, it's a spiritual principle. You've got to die in order to resurrect. When you resurrect, the enemy cannot stop you because you have God's power that you're moving in. So, but you have to die. All your ways, all your plans, all your desires, even the ones that he gave you, you have to just go, okay, I let it go. And if I just stay in your presence, Lord, I mean, I wanna be a singer more than anything in the world, but I wanna be in your presence. So if your presence doesn't take me to singing, if it's just so that my daughter can take on what I, what I have, my daughters, then that's fine. Because I'm in your presence, and that's the finish line. I don't care. I just love being in your presence. So I don't want to go before him, and I don't want to fall behind. So if he takes me to that, great. So I've learned how to bear that, that dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in my body. Now why? because of the tree of life. See, it says, it says that, um, did I miss a slide? Look and see if I miss one. Or you miss one. Yeah, you miss one. Did you miss another one? Are you sure? Okay, the tree of life is the fulfillment of dreams and expansion. So how did they get there? The anointing upon you in this world is going to bring the adversary. If you want the anointing, the anointing comes through suffering. The enemy is here to make 
You suffer to get it. That's how it works. See, it was supposed to be easy 